Hello friends, I am Mavni and uh, I am here with another chapter, Flat Processes. Now today we will discuss this chapter in quite detail and uh, firstly what is life processes? Life processes are those processes which helps an organism to survive and these uh, processes are very essential for to live. Now there are various process there are various processes which are essential uh, to to alive to be alive. Now we will discuss about such processes in this lecture. Now let's get started, friends. Now we have here the life processes, and now we will discuss life processes in more detail. Now. We know that life processes are those processes which helps us uh, to be alive and we cannot live without these life processes. Now let us know what are those uh, life processes which are essential to live. Now we have here nutrition. As we all know, nutrition is very essential for us to survive. Secondly, we have respiration. We all know that uh, if we are, uh, we are alive only when we breathe in, breathe in oxygen and uh, this is called respiration. Note us, uh, there are many uh, all living organisms respire to live. Now, second is we have respiration. Third one is transportation. Now, the food that living organisms eat uh, is transported from uh, in different tissues of living organism and this is done by transportation. Third one we have excretion. Excretion is the removal of uh, toxic waste from our body and this is, it is essential to remove this waste as it can cause lots of diseases to us. So fourth one we have excretion. Now let us discuss uh, these life processes one by one in detail. Now, firstly, we have nutrition. We will discuss about unicellular organisms. Now, how unicellular organisms get their food, get nutrition from their environment. Now we take an example of a unicellular organism such as amoeba. We have amoeba. We have many other unicellular organisms such as paramecium and uh, there are there is amoeba. Sectra, there are many unicellular organisms. Now, in unicellular organisms such as amoeba, we have uh, we have nutrition. They they obtain their nutrition from their surrounding. For example, uh, they take their food from their surrounding. For example, here we have amoeba. We have nucleus in it and other my microorganisms in it. We have rhizobiums and we have nucleus, we have endoplasmic reticulum in this amoeba. Let us take an example that this is a cool particle here. Now the amoeba will trap this that food particle. Now this is a food particle here. And these are pseudopodia. Which helps amoeba to capture the food and get nutrition from it. Now, this food particle is locked 
within the amoeba and the amoeba can easily take nutrition from it. That is how amoeba takes nutrition from, from this food particle. This is the process how, which, how amoeba takes nutrition. How unicellular organisms take nutrition. Just like amoeba, there are other unicellular organisms such as penicillium and uh, many much more organisms which use this, this similar process to get their nutrition. Now, furthermore, we will discuss about in nutrition, we have green plants. Now, how do green plants obtain their nutrition? As we all know, green plants take their nutrition by the process called photosynthesis. We have photo Synthesis. Now, in this process, photosynthesis, we have breakdown of energy. Now, in green plants obtain their nutrition, in they take carbon dioxide, they, they take carbon dioxide, and they, in the presence of In the presence of chlorophyll, chlorophyll and water, they mix glucose, C six and twelve. This is a chemical formula for glucose. It also releases oxygen gas. Now we have CO2. In the presence of chlorophyll and water, it gives C6H12O6 and O2. And a point to be noted here is that sunlight is also needed in this. Sunlight gives heat. Here, sunlight and chlorophyll are very essential for this process. With the help, uh, with CO2 and H2O in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight, we have C6H2O6 and O2. Further, this glucose is break down by the mitochondria. By mitochondria in the form of A, P. In our previous classes, we have learned about ATP. ATP is an energy currency of cell, and the full form of ATP is adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy currency of cell. Even in green plants as well as in humans and other animals. Now, that is how green plants take their nutrition from their surroundings. They, they use this carbon dioxide and both. And they also give, gives us oxygen gas after this reaction. Now, let us talk. If you want to take screenshot, you can. Now we have learned about the process of nutrition. The process of nutrition. In unicellular organisms, or 
Academics and Green Class. In Green Class, we have CO2, H2O, which gives C6H1 oxygen plus oxygen. And we have chlorophyll. And so on. Now, in this process, in the chlorophyll, we have chloroplasts. Chlorophyll. In chlorophyll, we have chloroplasts. These chloroplasts absorbs. These absorbs heat energy. After the chloroplast absorbs heat energy, then it is further used in C6H2 losses and organ. Now, we further study about some more processes to obtain nutrition. We have Holozoic morphism. We have parasitic morphism. And we have saprophyte morphism. Now, what is chorozoic morphine? Chorozoic morphine nutrition is, is cleaning in organisms which take food. Other organisms these take food from other organisms, but they harm that organisms. Now, in this case, in the horizontal mode of nutrition, the organisms harms the host from which they are getting their nutrition. On the other hand, in the parasitic mode, we have mosquitoes and other insects. Mosquitoes serve the blood, but it doesn't harm the host. In this mode, organism does not harm. Just, but in case of horozoic, it harms the host. In parasitic mode, it doesn't do so. In parasitic mode of nutrition, we have many organisms which uh, acquire their nutrition from dead and decaying material. From dead and Became material. They are also known as decomposers. Now, here, these decomposers play a very important role uh, in purifying our earth, and due to these decomposers. We have a uh, fresh, uh, we can, uh, the air is fresh. Everything is because of these decomposers. These decomposers cleans the earth uh, so that we can survive easily. Decomposers act on dead and decaying material. They get the nutrition from dead and decaying material. And they are very important for the ecosystem too. You can take the same sort of
Now here comes the most important nutrition and humans. Also known as human digestive system. And alimentary Now, in human digestive system, first we will talk about the diagram. Now here, now here we have esophagus, also known as food. Now the human digestive system starts with the esophagus. Here we have the bubble cavity. Here we have, we have the esophagus. Now, in the bubble cavity, in our mouth, we have starch digestion. We have starch digestion. Now, in the bubble cavity, our mouth, starch digestion takes place. In, in this process the starch is break down into sugar. In the bubble cavity digestion of starch takes place and the starch is converted into sugar. Okay. Now the food comes to the esophagus. Now what is the function of the esophagus? We have learned that mouth digests starch and converts it into sugar. Now, the function is of esophagus, the food pipe, is to transport the food to stomach. To our stomach. Now, stomach is also a digesting agent in the digestive system. Now, this contains three enzymes. What the stomach contains? It contains Free enzyme. It contains free enzyme. Mucus, LCL, or pepsin. Now, the food comes in our mouth. In the bubble cavity, the star digest and break down into sugar. Secondly, the food comes in the esophagus, in the food pipe. Piece of paper transport this food into this stomach. In the stomach, we have three enzymes, mucus, HCL, or the peps. Now, first we will talk about HCL, also known as hydrochloric acid. Now, what is hydrochloric acid? This is a very poisonous acid. This acid, uh, this acid kills the harmful germs which are present in our food. Yes, it kills the harmful organisms present in our food. Now, the HCL protects us from the germs. Now, what is the what is the function of mucus? Mucus protects the inner lining of the stomach. It protects the inner lining of the stomach. As we know, HCL is a very dangerous acid. It is 
uh, very corrosive acid and it and also cause injury in the stomach. So to prevent this injury, the inner lining of the stomach is protected by the mucus. Now the function of mucus is the protection. Now, what is the function of Pepsi? It converts the proteins. P pepsin, P proteins. It converts the proteins into amino acids. What does it do? It converts the proteins into amino acids. Okay. Now, the food is now is transported into small intestine. Now we have first we throw the large intestine. Now we have here the large intestine. Here we have the small intestine. Yes. Now the food is transported into the small intestine. Now this small intestine, this is small intestine. Now we have more organelles here. We have liver here, which secretes bile juice and bile soap. In the liver, we have water bread which plays a very important role in digestion. This is called gallbladder. This is our liver. We have large intestine. Here we have diaphragm. Here we have pancreas. These are banana shaped structures. These are called pancreas. Now let us discuss about these organs in detail. This is an Now the food goes in. Let us put this food. This goes in into this uh, buccal cavity. In buccal cavity, uh, mouth star digestion takes place. We have uh, stars digest into sugar, and in the esophagus, the food pipe, the food is transported to the stomach. This is our stomach. Stomach contains the enzymes, mucus, HCL, pepsin. Now. Pepsin protects the inner lining of the stomach from acid, hydrochloric acid, which is, which is a very, uh, which is very exothermic, and uh, LCL, the hydrochloric acid kills the bacteria, the germs present in our food. Okay, uh, this stomach is filled with these enzymes. Okay, these are the three enzymes. This is the food body. Okay, the HCL kills uh, germs present in the food. Now the pepsin, pepsin P for pepsin P for protein. It digests the protein and convert this protein into amino acid. What does it do? It converts the protein into amino acid. Okay. Now the food in the stomach we have here the liver and the colon. Now in gold bladder we have bile juice and bile juice. Now bile juice. Bile juice contains an enzyme called trypsin, which also digests the proteins. But as pepsin and trypsin. To 
where they digest protein. Why? Because protein is not completely digested by the pepsin. That's why trypsin digests proteins and further converts them into amino acids. Okay, now the trypsin, uh, the, the trypsin converts the protein into amino acids. Now, what is, what is the function of bile? It does emulsification. Now, in emulsification, it breaks down, it breaks down large globules, large globules of fat. It breaks down the large globules of fat and converts the fat into fatty acids. It converts the fat into fatty acid. It converts fat as well as carbohydrates. That is how the various minerals, carbohydrates, fats, vitamin minerals are digested in different parts of our digestive system. Fat and carbohydrates are converted into fatty acids. Now, here the small intestine. Now, the digestion of uh, fat, proteins, and proteins are is done in small intestine. And also, small intestine is a site of complete digestion. Site of complete digestion. Now, this small intestine is a site of complete digestion. Now, after the complete digestion, the food goes into the large intestine. Now, what is the function of the large intestine? This absorbs water. Although water is dissolved in this food, now the large intestine absorbs the water content and uh, transforms this into the blood and uh, in the large intestine the water is absorbed and finally the waste is removed by anus. This is how the nutrition in humans takes place. You can take a screenshot and also we have Alimentary canal. We have not here. Alimentary canal. Now here, alimentary canal consists of esophagus, stomach, large intestine, small intestine. Liver, gallbladder, and pancreas are not a part of alimentary canal. This is an exception that liver, gallbladder, and pancreas are not a part of alimentary canal. They are helper in the digestive system. They act as helper in the digestive system. And also, the pancreas plays a very important role in the digestion. Actually, it contains, contains the bile juice, it contains the trypsin. Now, this pancreas contains trypsin, which digests the proteins and uh, also it, contain, it converts the protein into amino acids. Okay? Now friends, it is enough for today. We will uh, discuss 
more in more detail in our next lecture thank you have a nice day